Alrighty, hey guys, welcome to another lesson. You're gonna absolutely love this lesson or you're gonna absolutely hate it. That is my promise, that is my guarantee. This is about social media and why you should, in my opinion and my experience of helping men quit porn and masturbation for many years now and also my own experience of quitting, uh, I recommend strongly that you consider doing a complete detox from all social media for at least six weeks, okay? Now, before you go ahead and leave this video, I know all of the reasons that go through the mind. Trust me, I've been through this entire process myself and also seeing the, the process uh, play out in other men that have done this detox. And I promise you, if you just do it and trust me in this and are you willing to change, just watch this video. And my goal in this video is to convince you and to convince that brain of yours that doing a detox will actually make you really, really happy and you'll actually enjoy your life a lot more, all right? So here are the four reasons that, uh, that I've come up with that doing a detox from all social media is very, very beneficial, especially for people who have an unwanted and ongoing porn habit, all right? Now, the obvious reason is that being on social media as a recovering porn user is the same as a recovering alcoholic drinking water at a bar, okay? Same as an alcoholic going to the nightclubs and saying, oh, I'm just gonna drink some water. It's the same justification, it's the same logic, it's the same thing going on, right? How likely is it that somebody who is an alcoholic or past alcoholic is not gonna be tempted in some, to some degree to go back to their old habit when everyone else is doing it? It's just around the corner. There's literally the micro decisions that are required in order to engage in that habit are very, very small and very subtle and the chances of that alcoholic acting out and you know, binge drinking is, is very, very high. But the justification is real because it's like, oh, it's just water. I'm just gonna go to, to socialize. I'm just gonna go to drink water and, and have all these benefits, right? So the four main reasons, all right? The first reason to quit all social media, even temporarily, is because social media does produce the same dopamine that porn produces in your brain. The same thing is going on, the same hit, the same rush. You might see it as like a smaller degree of dopamine, like a splash of dopamine, but the effect of dopamine and the nature of dopamine is that it's always trying to get you back to that original source of that hit. So in essence, if you keep spending time on social media, even if you're trying to quit porn, the chances of you being on Instagram, being on YouTube, being on Twitter, being on whatever platform and seeing something that is gonna produce, produce that same level, the exact same level of dopamine as watching porn itself is very high. It's almost impossible not to flood your brain with those, those chemicals and those neural pathways, right? So that's the first reason, is it takes at least four weeks from studies that have been done on dopamine levels, it takes at least four weeks for people to detox and to rewire their dopamine brain off of that hit, and then the dopamine levels start to normalize and die down after four weeks. This is why most men and women can't just uh, abstain from porn for even four weeks, is because it gets so difficult and the peak the peak of that of your brain and all the chemicals trying to get you back to that original source is so strong that they usually give in within four weeks, right? Let me know if that's true, right? The, probably the chances are, if you're watching this video, the longest time that you've been able to abstain and just kind of pull, push yourself through the habit is about two weeks, three weeks, four weeks maybe, and then usually at the end of the month or the beginning of the month, you usually go back to the habit, okay? So that's why doing a detox is important for your brain to let yourself just rewire, to just reset to detox. Doesn't that sound nice? And I promise you if you do this, try it for at least two weeks, okay? Highly recommend try it for at least two weeks and see how you feel. I promise you that if you do it for at least two, two weeks, it might be difficult, but overall, if you take a step back and look at yourself and how you've had more time, more energy, more focus, less wasted time on your phone or on the computer or on the TV, you will feel better and you'll have more energy and you'll be more alive. And that's really what we're trying to do here, right? Second reason to do a, a social media detox is that the temptations and the triggers to go back to your old porn habit are just around the corner, right? It's literally just a few clicks away from an Instagram profile, right? Or being on YouTube to go and see something that's borderline pornographic or even pornographic on those platforms. So that's another reason. It's like I said, the same as an alcoholic going to a bar just to drink water or just to socialize, it doesn't work because chances are very, very high that they're gonna go relapse and end up back in their old cycle of habit, okay? Third reason to detox all social media for at least six weeks, guys, is because, get this, the process that you're, you have to go through in order to give up social media is the same mental process that you go through when you want to quit porn, okay? 
because when I asked you when you first started this, this video and I said you should do a detox of all social media for six weeks, what were the first uh, things that were going through your mind, right? Probably all the reasons, probably all the, oh, it's going to be difficult, oh, it's going to be a challenge, oh, I can't do that, oh, I need social media because it's relaxation or it's stress relief or I need it because of work or whatever. I need it because when I'm bored, I don't know what to do. I need it because when I'm in the toilet, I don't know what to do. Or when I'm in the elevator, I don't know what to do. Or when I'm at the stoplight, I don't know what to do, right? It's the same with video games, by the way. I do recommend the same thing for video games, but they're kind of, you can see them in this, on the same side of the same coin, all right? What I recommend that you do is that you make a pros and cons list. This is probably the easiest kind of litmus test to see if you are willing to do this and you're able to have the mental capacity to do a social media detox is make yourself a pros and cons list. Pros of social media, cons of social media, okay? And I did this exact thing when I was struggling myself. Uh, and I was really, really, I knew deep in my m mind and heart that I needed to give up social media because it was very, very quickly leading me down this rabbit hole of acting out. So I made a pros and cons list for YouTube specifically. Like the other ones were easy. Instagram is like, I don't need that. Uh, Twitter, don't need that. Everything else, I don't need that. YouTube was the hard one for me because the justifications for it were so strong. The reasons and the pros for it were so strong. So I made a list, okay? And my list, personally, I had three pros and and... We'll get to the cons in a bit. The three pros were, number one, it's stress relief, right? If a hard day at work, hard day in my family relationships, I'm stressed out, it's stress relief. Number two, it relaxes me at the end of the day or you know, when I just wanna relax, it relaxes me. It takes me out, outside of a state of, of unpleasant emotions and takes me into realization. And number three pro is that I believe that there's some benefit to YouTube, like it's educational and I learn a lot of stuff, okay? So let's go through these three pros uh, because they're probably very relevant to you as well. Pro number one is stress relief. And number two, that it's uh, relax relaxing. I realized at the moment, I was like, man, this is exactly what a porn addict says when they're trying to quit porn. Like I sound exactly like one of the guys that I'm trying to help with the porn habit when I'm making the justifications for YouTube, right? So I was like, interesting. So I've developed a dependency essentially on YouTube on social media, just to not be stressed and not to be to be uh, to be experiencing unpleasant emotions like boredom, right, or anxiety, or frustration, or anger, and the, or fear, those sorts of things. So I was like, okay, if that's the case, that I'm making the same justifications as porn, that means that it's actually not providing the same stress relief that I would think it is. In fact, it's providing more of a super normal and hyper-stimulated stress relief that's taking me instantly to a form of relaxation that's temporary and not actually healthy and not beneficial, beneficial for me long-term, right? Because if we're thinking long-term down the road, years and years down the road, if I always go to a super normal stimulant like video games, social media, porn, whatever, instead of the natural ways of stress relief, I'm always gonna need that in order to not be stressed. And that scared me. Right? That scared me because I noticed that whenever I was really stressed out of my mind or fighting with my wife or just feeling these unpleasant emotions, I would without, without question always go back to, these, to my room and I would hide and try to go on YouTube or try to go to social media or try to launch the porn browser, whatever. And that was my habit and that was my dependency, okay? So those two I understand. The third is a little more tricky, right? Because I believe that YouTube and social media add some benefits. Like, oh, it helps me learn stuff. It's educational, right? And then I got honest with myself and I realized that most of the time, I would say 89% of the time that I'm using YouTube, it's actually not for education. It's for mindless, mind numbing, just scrolling through it and seeing whatever the YouTube Google universe wants to serve me that day. In most cases, I'm willing to bet for you too, most of the time you're on YouTube or whatever social media, it's not intentional, but more mindless. And the less mindless and more mindful we are with social media, that's the name of the game, all right? So we're not trying to get you off social media because it's the evil and it's wrong, it's the devil, whatever. I'm trying to get you being intentional with your time, with your energy and your focus so that you can do more in your life, all right? Here's the thing though, when we get to the cons, this is where, where the, it really broke for me. And I really understood that I wanted to give this thing up. I went to the cons list and I was like, okay, cons of social media. I don't feel great after spending an hour on YouTube or a few hours on social media. It's always gonna be a dependency for me as long as I have this habit like I alluded to before. I'm never gonna actually give it up because I'm gonna always need it to go back to and I'm never gonna figure out exactly how to deal with these unpleasant emotions that are constantly causing me to escape that feeling and run to some kind of stimulant to stimulate myself 
and experience that thrill that is artificial and temporary. Number three con is it wastes a lot of time. I actually pulled up my screen time on my phone, right? There's like in the settings, Apple, Android, you can actually go and see how much time you spend on specific apps. And it was mind boggling, mind blowingly too much. It was like two hours or three hours a day at the time. And I was like, wow, I did not realize because I was afraid to look for so long. I recommend that you look, how much do you, time do you spend on social media, right? So that's the third, third thing is this, you spend a lot of time that could be used. Number four, this is the fourth and actually I think the most important uh, drawback of social media porn, all of video games, all that, and that is the opportunity cost, okay? Now the opportunity cost is usually a lot higher than we think with these things. In other words, the opportunity cost is what could you have done with the time, with the focus, with the energy, with the with the absence of this up and down emotional roller coaster of feeling stressed and not stressed, stressed and not stressed, aroused and not aroused, aroused and not aroused, bored, not bored, bored, not bored, anxious, not anxious. Imagine what you could do with all of that up and down, all that time that's two, three hours a day, all that energy that you could have used on something else. And when I realized that, I was like, man, I could spend two, three hours a day doing something important, working on my goals, working on my North Star, being excited, doing things that are actually good for me. And let me remind you, video games are not good for you. Social media is not good for you. Porn is not good for you. And that's the, the biggest tragedy of all is that the opportunity cost is often so much higher than we think. Because imagine what you could do, right? And that's what I did. And as soon as I got those few hours back a day, that's when everything turned around. My life started to change, guys. It literally started to change. Because I stopped having the temptation to go back to porn. I stopped having the up and down dependency, emotional dependency on this habit just to keep me alive, just to keep me not feeling the, 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 the numbing pain of being bored, of being stressed, and being, being anxious, of being fearful, of being angry anymore because that's what this supernormal stimulant does every time you try to escape those unpleasant emotions and you never address why you feel those emotions and how to release those emotions in a productive way and you always go to some kind of stimulant, you'll never figure out how to deal with it. I'm sorry. And as long as you have that dependency, you will never be porn. Let me say that again. As long as you have a dependency on some kind of stimulant to alleviate your emotions, you will never be porn because you will never figure out why you have this happen in the first place, all right? Because if it's not porn, it's something else. This is usually what happens when somebody goes cold turkey and just kind of no faps and wills themselves through quitting a porn addiction. I'm, I'm guilty of this too. I have done this for a long time. Is when you, when you just quit and you don't address the root reason that you have that ha habit, then you're just gonna develop another addiction, another dependency on something else. On what? Social media. Video games, this happens all the time, guys. Anger, irritability. What happens when you give up porn for a month, right? What happens when you give it up with, for two months and you don't actually figure out how to fill yourself up with the real stuff, the genuine thrill, the genuine excitement, the genuine love and acceptance and connection in your life? What happens? You have an uncontrollable desire to escape because you, you remove the Band-Aid. You removed the cream, the itching cream that you've, de you've depended on for most of your life, for a lot of you, many years. And what happens when you remove that? You do have this uncontrollable desire to escape, all right? And that's the fourth reason, okay? Just to break this camel's back, guys, <laughs> for you. The fourth, re fourth reason that you should do a social media detox from all social media is that social media is an easy escape. It is. It's a super easy escape, and I know this firsthand. Anytime that I'm stressed or angry or not anymore, mind you, I have better ways of managing those emotions, but I would always run to social media. And every time I did that, every time you try to alleviate these unpleasant emotions through escapism, you'll never figure out why you have this habit, okay? Because you're running from something. Let me remind you guys, the reason you have a porn habit, the only reason you have a porn habit, of course there are many factors like it's sexual, it's a hundred billion dollar industry, it's all these factors, there's spiritual factors, there's all this stuff going on, there's exposure from a young age, there's you know, the availability of it on the internet, all of these factors, but the primary reason that you choose to use porn, even though you don't want to, even though you're a man of moral values, the reason you choose to do it is because it's an escape, because you're running from something. You are running from something and everybody is, and that's the reality. And when you figure out what you're running from, that's the golden question. That's the million dollar question that you have to answer. You figure out what you're running from, what you're trying to escape from, then you'll solve it. Then you'll figure it out and you'll address that. Then you won't need porn anymore because you'll be filled up. All right. So the, the, I'm going to conclude this uh, video with one testimony from a guy that's uh, in the program, the Spartan program. And then I'm going to give you some tips about how to actually uh, 
kind of practically do this detox and, and give it up for at least six weeks, hopefully more than that. Try it for at least two weeks and then see how you go. All right, so this is what he said. Today marks the final day of my 30-day detox. He did it for 30 days. I'm surprised how much I was able to do and how good I feel spiritually and physically. It was definitely a productive 30 days and it showed me how I could invest my time more wisely in areas of my life that I neglected. Thanks for sharing about the 30 day detox and challenging me to think about it. I wasn't sure how it was going to go and I was worried, but in the end, I, it was a wonderful experience that I can carry for forever. Amen. Look at that. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you guys some practical steps for how you can do this. Uh, I, When I tell people to detox, I recommend that you, if you want, you can do a total like absolute cold turkey for six weeks and it might be challenging because like I said, you've depended on these stimulants for so long, it might be difficult, it might make you irritable, it might make you, but here's the thing, that's okay, that's part of the process and every time you're feeling like that urge to escape or that urge to be angry or irritable, it's a hint, think of it as a hint to what you actually need to address because until now, you've not been able to address it because you've always been stimulated. That's a hint to, for you to figure out what you need to go into and how you need to go inward to figure out how to uncover that every time you're feeling that, okay? But, however, if you feel like you would like to maintain like one TV show, and I recommend this if you want, pick one TV show for the entire six weeks and just stick with one show, one episode per day. That's it. It shouldn't be more than 30 minutes at most an hour, very most and just stick with one. And the reason that's important is because it's intentional, guys. It's intentional. That's what, that's what it is. It's about being mindful and not mindless about your use. Instead of you know, going to the toilet, bringing your phone, and just mindlessly going to Facebook or YouTube or wherever when you have time, or TikTok, God forbid, right? <laughs> okay, so one show. I also understand that it can be very, very helpful to have things like YouTube that for educational purposes. Here's the thing, though. You can use YouTube and Google and apps like those and websites like those intentionally and mindfully, right? Instead of just going to YouTube homepage and seeing what YouTube throws at you, I want you to use YouTube and Google only for search functionality, okay? So for example, you're playing you know, a sport like volleyball or soccer or whatever, and you wanna learn a specific thing. You don't just go to YouTube and say, you know, okay, let's see what, what my homepage shows me about that, you know, because usually chances are you're gonna spend a lot of time watching stuff that you don't need to watch. Instead, go to the search bar and you search how to do specific thing, how to jump higher in volleyball, beach volleyball, how to throw a curveball, whatever. That way it's mindful. And you just watch that video, learn what you need to do, and get out. That's it, okay? It's not about being mindless anymore. It's about being mindful, all right? So that's kind of a tip I can give to you guys. The other thing I want to recommend, the third tip I want to give you is there are some apps available for phones especially that are really good at blocking websites and uh, apps. There's one that I use called Block Site, okay? Block Site, if you can see that, Block Site. At the very t Anyways, Block Site is one that you can use. You can block specific apps and specific websites. And when you try to access those websites, it actually has like this picture that says like you can't access it. You basically can't anymore. And this is valuable because uh, if you have this dependency on social media, chances are you have that ghost thumb, you know, when you're on the toilet and you like have your phone and you just like go to facebook.com and you're not even sure, you, didn't even, you weren't even planning to, you just did it automatically. This app, these kinds of apps are helpful because it kind of reminds you, it's like, hey, like you're doing this thing, remember? And you go, oh yeah, and then you back away from there. So I recommend doing that just kind of as like a, like a, like a filter or, or a blocker for you to make it harder to, to access that kind of stuff. Anyways, uh, lots of love to you guys. I hope this is helpful. Please remember that to make the pros and cons list for why you sh should keep social media and shouldn't. And I promise you, if you do it for at least one week or two weeks, you will, you will want to continue because it's that beneficial for you guys. All right, lots of love. See you soon.